Here's how to make your very own acoustic cymoscope. It's fun to build and great fun to use. Its physics principle is simple. When sound meets a membrane, it must imprint a cymatic pattern. These patterns are all around us all of the time, on furniture, on glass, on our skin, but they're invisible, so we're not aware of them. And as mentioned in the Shift Network Foundational course, cymatic patterns also manifest on the membranes of every cell in our body whenever we are immersed in sound or music. To make sound visible we need a revealing medium and I like to use fine table salt because it's intrinsically safe. And of course we need a membrane such as a giant latex balloon. And balloons by the way remind us that sound does not travel in waves through the air but as bubbles and the acoustic cymoscope allows us to see a cross-section through the sound bubble. So let's begin with the construction. The main components of the acoustic cymoscope are the resonating chamber, which is a simple plastic container, as you see here, around six inches or 15 centimeters diameter. We also need an embroidery hoop, which is slightly larger in diameter, allowing it to fit easily over the top of the plastic container, as you see here. You'll also need a pack of giant balloons. They usually come in multi-colours, but I've chosen the blue colour here to maximise contrast with the white salt that I'm going to be sprinkling onto the surface. You also will need a length of garden hose, and this is about two feet long, or 60 centimetres, and it has a bore of around about half an inch, or 12 millimetres. Now, to begin the process, you need to draw around the hose with a black permanent marker, Sharpie, about halfway up the side of the container. And then you're going to be using a scratch awl uh, with a very sharp point to make a series of holes around the inside of the circle that you've drawn. And then to remove the middle of the circle, you, know, you can either use the tip of scissors or better still, you can use nail clippers. Then to file the, uh, the perimeter of the hole, to make it nice and smooth so that the, uh, the input tube will fit, you can simply use a rat tail file, taking care uh, to keep checking with the hose. Make sure that you're not making the hole too big. So here, if I just, uh, I've already made the circle, as you can see, uh, with the Sharpie. If I get a little bit closer, you see, you'll see the hole there, and also you can see where I have made a series of holes here, just starting to make some holes uh, with, the, uh, with the scratch hole. But <laughs> to save time, I've already made a hole here, as you can see, and I went around the inside of the hole like this with a rat tail file to make it nice and smooth. And now, before we actually enter this tube into the container, one of the things, one of the tips that I can give you is to use a bag of sand or salt indeed, but this is simply to add weight to the bottom of the container, and you'll find that it does make it a lot easier to use, you know, once you've added the sand, or just simply anything with a heavy weight. But I'm using sand in this plastic bag. Just Pop it into the bottom like that and then we can insert the tube. Insert the tube like this into this nice tight hole and it is very tight but it needs to be really. Well one other thing is that it's very important to have a little bit of breathing space so we make another hole you can see here we make a small hole on the other side, on the opposite side to the hose. So there's the hose and there's the very small hole on the other side. And this is important in order to let out your breath sound, some of the pressure from your breath sounds. Now, the only sort of tricky part of the whole process is what I'm just about to explain. And that is, you take the center of the embroidery hoop here, and then we're going to, we've already cut the balloon in half, by the way, of course, we can, you can see here, we've got two halves of the balloon. 
So I'm using one of these halves, and by the way it has a shiny side and a dull side, so I'm going to have the, uh, the, the dull side facing towards me as I place it over the, the smaller of the two hoops. Now it's very important to try to, to maximize the periphery around here so we get equal, equal amounts of latex that are around the edge of the hoop. And then we're going to take the larger of the two hoops and place this over the top. Now this is the little tricky part that I mentioned. Obviously it's a question of how much tension do you give with this little screw here you know, while you're slipping it over. If you don't have enough tension then you, you will uh, encounter some problems and if you have too much tension you'll also encounter some problems. So it's best just to experiment a little bit with the amount of tension on this at the point when you slip this hoop over, um, over the bottom hoop. So let me just now put that over like so and press down firmly like this. Now you can see at this point we've got some frilly edges around the back side here but also notice that there's no tension on this membrane and we do indeed need tension. So this is why what we now do is we pull on this frilly part like so to give it some tension. Now obviously <laughs> if, the, um, if the amount of uh, tension on the outer hoop is, in, is not sufficient then when I'm pulling like this to add tension to the uh, to the latex, it, it wouldn't stay. It would simply, you know, slip slip back. So this is why it's important to get just the right amount of tension on the uh, on the outer hoop. So I keep pulling it around like this to give it some tension. Slowly around. Let's just see what it's like now. Mm, it's got a little bit of tension, but actually still still not enough. So I'm going to give it some more tension. <laughs> it's good that you can see exactly how to do this because um, it, although it is a very simple procedure, if you haven't had this little tutorial, I imagine that you would, you might struggle a little bit. It was actually quite funny what happened next because I finished the whole, <laughs> the whole video and uh, went to my iPhone, which is the medium that I'm using to record this, and the memory was full. <laughs> so anyway, here we are back again. And uh, this time you'll see that the membrane is quite nicely tensioned. It's got a little bit of tension on it, as you see. And I've also added a piece of twine from this little bundle here uh, between the tensioner, this tensioner device, and a little push pin, these little push pins here, I've got one here, and literally you put a push pin into the edge of the hoop and then attach a length of twine like this, and you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to add a little bit more tension now to the membrane. We already have a little bit of tension, but now we're going to add a little bit more. And the way we do that is simply by dropping the hoop over the top like this, over the top and then we're going to I turn this around here to show you we're going to pull this twine down under the bottom of the container like like this to provide a little bit more tension and now you can hear it's literally like a drum okay now we need to remove some of the static from the surface of uh, the latex and we do that with one of these tumble dryer sheets. We simply rub the tumble dryer sheet over the surface of the latex and this will remove most of the static charge which always seems to, um, <laughs> to apply to latex like this. Just leave it for a second or two to dry. And then we're going to sprinkle on some fine salt, like this. 
I always think of sprinkling stars on the heavens when I do this. It's a really lovely, a lovely poetic thought. Nice fine amount of salt like that. And now we're ready to go. So from formlessness comes form. Just add sound. And so on. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with your acoustic sinoscope. And if you add a funnel to the end of it, appropriate to the size of the speaker that you have, then you'll be able to move the funnel onto the speaker and literally make virtually any sound visible. Have a lot of fun with your acoustic sinoscope.